Welcome to another tutorial video from Tullamats. Make sure and subscribe for more. In this video, we're looking at the angle created between two lines. So the example we're looking at today, we are going to be given the angle and we're going to be given one of the slopes and we'll be asked to find the slope of the other line. If you're looking for help on finding the angle between two lines where you know their slopes, check out our other video. So we're going to be using this formula from page 19 in your log tables. Uh, again, if you need to check the basic example where you're trying to find theta, check out another video. But here we'll be given theta and one of our slopes and we'll be asked to find the remaining slope. So let's take a look at an example here. So this example is asking us to find the equations of two lines which pass through a point and which makes an angle of 45 degrees with the line 2x plus y minus 2 is equal to 0. So if I'm looking at an exam question like this, uh, I'd be drawn to the key words like uh, making the angle of 45 degrees. So that's drawn my attention there to page 19 in the log tables for the angle created between two lines. So I'm going to put down my formula from my log tables here and it's stated as tan theta is equal to plus or minus m1 minus m2 all over 1 plus m1 times m2. Again, that's taken from page 19. Now, if you look at here, we need some information. We need theta, we need m1, and we need m2. Now, we know our angle is 45 degrees, and we're only given one of the lines. We're given the line 2x plus y minus 2 is equal to 0. So what I'm going to go off and find the slope of that line, and I'm going to use my y equals mx plus c in order to find the slope. The slope is the number in front of the x. So I'm just going to manipulate that equation of the line. I'm going to move my uh, 2x over, and I'm going to move my minus 2 over, or subtract 2x and add 2 from both sides, whichever way you do these. So that's leaving me with, therefore, y is equal to minus 2x plus 2. The number in front of your x is giving me the slope. So my slope here for this equation of the line, my slope or my m in this case, I'm going to call it m1, is going to give me a slope of negative 2. So that's my first step. I'm finding the slope of the given equation of the line. Now I'm going to sub that into my formula, my tan formula. So I'm coming up here now and I'm subbing in my angle, which is 45 degrees given to me in the question. That is equal to plus or minus m1, which I've just found, which is minus 2. I'm going to put that in a bracket, minus my m2 all over 1 plus m1, again, which I've just found to be minus 2, times my second slope, which I'm calling m2. Now you can notice here on the top of the fraction, I have a plus and a minus. So what I'm going to do just to help me with this question here is I always put that top line in its own bracket. So see here, I'm just putting the minus two minus my second slope in a bracket because in a couple of minutes, I have to deal with that plus and the minus. You go to your calculator and you solve for tan of one or 45, which will give you one. So I have uh, 1 is equal to plus or minus, I'm going to put in that red bracket again just to keep it separate, minus 2 minus m2 all over 1 plus minus 2 times m2, which is giving me a plus multiplied by a negative, which gives me minus 2m2. Okay, so hopefully that's making sense. Now I'm going to deal with the plus or minus. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to write out this question twice. First for the plus sign and then secondly for the minus sign. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go 1 is equal to uh, my plus sign and I'm going to do my bracket and I'm going to write in minus 2 minus m2 close my bracket all over 1 minus 2m2 and I'm going to do out it again. I'm just going to write it in here beside it, which is going to be one is equal to minus this time. So I'm taking the minus uh, sign. I'm just going to write it down here actually to keep them side by side. So one is equal to minus bracket 
minus 2 minus m2 all over 1 minus 2 m2. So now I'm basically going to multiply in that plus sign on the left hand side. So if I multiply in this plus, it's like it's a positive 1. You can put a plus in here if you want. See the way I'm putting that 1 in in the green? You're basically multiplying in that positive sign. In other words, it's not changing, but we need to, to show it as part of our maths. So here we have 1 is equal to 1 multiplied by minus 2 is giving me minus 2 and a positive multiplied by a negative is a negative all over 1 minus 2m2. So I haven't really done anything there, but I've multiplied in that plus sign. It makes a little bit of a difference now on the second one. So what I'm going to do here is I'm multiplying in this minus sign. So this is where it gets a little bit trickier. I'm multiplying in that minus. You can put a plus or a minus 1 in here. We can put that 1 in there to show that it exists. So I'm multiplying in the minus. So I get 1 is equal to minus 1 by minus 2 is giving me a positive 2. And minus by minus gives me a positive m2 all over 1 minus 2 times my second slope. So what you should hopefully be seeing here is that the top line and both of my fractions here are the opposite signs. One of them has multiplied by a plus and the other one has been multiplied by the negative. Now we are basically going to get your common denominator for both fractions. I'm going to just do it a quick route here. I'm going to put them both over 1 and we're having fractions equal to fractions. So this is just one way of doing it. So I'm going to basically cross multiply. I'm going to multiply across. So that is going to give me 1 multiplied by the bottom, which is giving me 1 minus 2 times m2 is equal to 1 times the top, which is minus 2 minus the second slope. So I've now got it linear. I'm going to basically just move my m's to one side and my constants, my numbers to the other. So I'm basically going to move my m's over to the left hand side and I'm going to use, move my constants to the right hand side. So when I tidy that up, it's giving me minus 2m plus my m when I move it over is equal to minus 2 and I'm moving over a positive 1 which becomes a negative 1. Again, you can add or subtract to either side depending on how you uh, solve equations. Minus 2m plus m is giving me a minus 1m. Again, I'm just saying m instead of m2 each time, which is equal to minus 3. And that then is giving me m is equal to minus 3 over minus 1. So I'm dividing both sides by negative 1, which is giving me m2, which is a positive three. So that's one possible slope. I'm now going to come over and finish my right hand side to find a second possible slope. So I'm going to cross multiply here uh, once again. So I'm going to cross multiply and I'm going to get uh, one multiplied by the bottom which is giving me one minus two m is equal to then I'm going to multiply the one by the top which is giving me two plus m. I'm now going to move my m's to the left and I'm moving my constants or my numbers to the right of the equal sign. So that's giving me minus 2m. I move over the m, it becomes a minus, equals to 2 and I move over the 1 and that becomes a negative 1. So I'm getting minus 3m2 is equal to 2, take away 1, which is a positive 1. To get m on its own, I divide across by negative 3, so that's giving me 1 over minus 3. So, basically, that's telling me that my alternative for my second slope is negative 1 third. You can see here that these are perpendicular slopes. Uh, possibly you're seeing that. Now, if we just scroll back up to the question, the question is asking us to find the equations, I've just lost it there, find the equations of two lines through the point minus 1, 1. So now we have to basically go off and find the equations of these lines. All I've done here is found the slope of these lines. So I'm going to take my two slopes, sub them into the equation of the line formula using the point minus 1, 1. So that's the point that I'm using now to form my equation of the line. I'm taking my equation of the line formula now from page 18 in my log tables. So my equation of the line formula from your log tables is y minus y1 
equals m times x minus x1. And I'm going to do this out for both slopes. Remember we found two slopes, so I'm going to do it out for both slopes. So I'm basically just going to draw a line down here to say that I'm doing it twice. So y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And in my first one, I'm just going to do my little grid here. I'm using the point uh, 1 or minus 1, 1. And that's my point and my slope that I'm using. I'm going to use the slope of 3. And in the second equation, I'm using the same point minus 1, 1. Sorry, I think I wrote down two minuses in the previous one. So let me just change that. And I'm using the slope of negative 1 third. So that's the information I'm using for both equations of the line. I'm going to sub them in. The first one doesn't have a fraction, so it's a straightforward one. So it's giving me y minus 1 because I'm filling in my x1 and my y1 here from the point, equals m, which is my slope, which is 3, times x minus x1, which is negative 1. So it's a double negative there. That double negative is going to give me a plus, so it's giving me x plus 1. I'm then going to multiply in that bracket, that 3, which is giving me y minus 1 is equal to 3x plus 3. I'm going to move everything to one side. I always like my equations of the lines uh, equaling zero. So I'm basically going to move the y over and the minus one over, which is giving me 3x plus 3 minus y plus one. And now I have nothing left on the left hand side. So that's why it's equal to zero. So that's giving me 3x uh, minus y plus four is equal to zero. Now, I always put the zero at the back. That's how we're used to looking at it. So I'm just going to basically put it equal to zero. So that's my first equation of the line. Now come over and do your second equation of the line. So same thing again, I'm subbing it in. Y minus one is equal to M, which is my slope minus a third, X minus minus one, subbing in my point. My two negatives are going to give me a plus. So minus one third times X plus one. You basically multiply across now by your highest denominator. So you'd multiply across by three, uh, which would give you three y minus three is equal to minus one. Just a little trick way maybe for some. Uh, you might see that short way of doing it. You're basically multiplying up that three just to see if you've seen that before. So your common denominator is three, or in other words, you're multiplying the left of the equals by that three. Just if some people, it might help you there. So three y minus three, is equal to the negative 1 times the x plus 1. So that's how I've gotten rid of my fraction there. I've multiplied across by 3. I now multiply in my bracket. So I'm getting 3y minus 3 is equal to, and when I multiply in that minus 1, I get minus 1x minus 1. Like on the left-hand side example, I'm going to move everything to the same side because I like them equal to 0. I always put the x first and I want it to be a positive. So this time I'm basically going to move them to the left hand side. So that's giving me when I move over to minus one x, it gives me a positive one x. I have a positive three y already over there. I have my negative three y or my negative three over there. And when I move over this negative one, that's going to become a positive one. All equal to nothing now because everything has moved. And just grouping the constants together leaves me with 1x plus 3y minus 2 is equal to 0. And there are my two equations of the line. So let's just recap what the question wanted us to do. The question wanted us to find two equations of the lines through the point and which make that angle of 45 degrees. Well, there my two equations of the lines are. There's my first one. There's my second one. Now I just want you to see what that looks like on a graph. So we've done our mathematics there. Let's just have a quick look to see what that looks like in reality. So it'll only take one second. Let's see what it looks like. So here on GeoGebra, I've graphed my two equations of the lines. So the blue one there that you see is your 3x minus y plus 4. And the red one is the 1x plus 3y minus 2. Now, what I'm also going to draw now, so there are the two equations of the lines that you've just found. I'm going to draw that original equation of the line which is given to us in the question. So that's the equation now I'm just going to mark in, in black. 
here. So that equation of the line is the one that's given in the, in the question. And I've created now my blue line and red line, which create angles of 45 degrees with that black line. So let's just mark in our 45 degrees. So do you see the two angles now that have been created with 45 degrees? So what that is basically telling us is we've, we were given that black line originally and they wanted us to come up with two new lines, the blue one and the red one, which create angles of 45 degrees with the black line. Now, some of you might extend that a little bit further and notice here that remember our two slopes, which were three and minus a third, which were perpendicular to each other. So you can see here that the angle between this, this red line and blue line is an angle of 90 degrees. Okay, so I hope visualizing it uh, kind of reinforces the maths that you've just done. Hope it helps. Thank you for watching another tutorial video from Tullamats. Make sure and subscribe.